The thing about the Lord is this. I think a lot of people don't really realize. Uh, shoot, I need more light here. Okay, I'm going to have to start this process over. Well, a lot of people don't realize that the Lord is the one that delivers. The Lord God is the one who delivered the Hebrews, the Israelites, the, uh, the chosen people, against all odds, uh, into uh, bl- one blessing after another. The only thing that held them back, obviously, was the faith. You know, how much faith do you have? And you can have faith so as to almost reach the goal, but not quite. So faith is really at test when you're calling upon the Lord for, for victory. But here's what it says. Thou shalt not be afraid of them, but shalt will remember what the Lord God did to Pharaoh and unto Egypt. The great temptations which thine eyes saw, and the signs and the wonders and the mighty hand, and the stretched out arm whereby the Lord thy God brought thee out, so shall the Lord thy God do unto all the people of whom thou art afraid. Moreover, the Lord thy God will send the hornet among them, and they that are left and hide themselves from thee be destroyed. I don't know how much more clear it can be than that. Um, But in a sense, you and I, and that's that's out of Deuteronomy 7, in a sense, that is... um, the journey that we are on. We are on a journey. I mean, we are deep behind enemy lines, deep in the bowels of Babylon. We went to their schools. We were diseducated. We were, we were uh, bandied about, uh, strewn in among them, despitefully used, uh, made targets of, because we were the Lord God's people. We were the chosen people of our time. And uh, this is kind of, maybe this is a bit of a new concept, but this is the word as it comes forth that I'm not going to edit it. We are the chosen people of our time. The people of God are the lambs who um, the world uh, believes are foolish, but the Lord uses those lambs to confound the wise with the miraculous and amazing deliverance that the Lord does on a daily basis. Remember, give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. So, you see, to become a wolf, you would have to not forgive those who trespassed against you and thereby not receive the daily bread from the Lord, but you would then thereby receive the daily bread from the world. And the world has a slave system that you can participate in, which no lamb would, because if they did, they would no longer be a lamb, but they would be a wolf or a man of the world, if you like. And um, who, like Esau, can fend for themselves, thank you very much, and whose God is money, and who will then fend for themselves, whose God is money, to sow... uh, to the result of getting money in an orderly fashion so that they can be looked upon with favor by society and thereby be uh, regarded as a contributing member of society where the Lord laughs at them and says, you're simply contributing to your own demise, your own death. Did I... Okay, we can go home now. That's the end of the sermon, boys and girls. Uh, That just summed it all up, didn't it? You, and again, it's the same theme as what we talked about last time. Um, you know, depart from me, I never knew you. You who work iniquity, Psalm 37, those who work iniquity will be cut off. Jesus fulfills Psalm 37 prophecy and says, I'm cutting you off. Because you never trusted me for your daily bread. You did it the world's way for your daily bread, which means your God is really money and you... uh you do an external thing regarding God on the weekend. You go to church, you go to temple, you go to synagogue, you go to whatever. And um, I just believe that anyone that has God has Yeshua. 
whether they know it or not, anyone who searches for truth has Yeshua and is on that path. Truth demands that what I am saying today is upheld, else you will be cut off. God is no respecter of persons. He is, it's not anything personal against you that you wish to sin for a season or you wish to sow to the world system so you could get some money so that you can then go do your God thing later. Um, and of course, this God does not understand that. It's, it's not a matter of his not understanding. It's a matter that the rules can't be broken. In other words, it's the, the, the way of God is set in stone, if you will. And it's, it's, it, he's no respecter. You either align with it or you don't. It's your choice. You are free and have the free will to reject God. All the people going to church this week, going to synagogue this week for Passover, or was that last week? I don't even know the dates anymore. But I mean, all these people that are doing these celebrations now on the pagan um, Easter, um, understand uh, that your souls will not be cleansed and your souls will not be fed. Any serious Torah-believing Jew, for example, who was um, sowing to the word of God, will find the Lord. It will overcome all cultural mores against Jesus and will understand that Yeshua, or God saves in Hebrew, is simply an extension of Yahweh, the one who gave the word, who gave the commandments to Moses. Simply an extension of that, um, you know, that this God, as David has said many times in the Psalms, you know, this God saves. This God is my salvation. Of whom will I fear? Well, no one. Well versed in, in uh, the, the, the statutes of God. You can either uphold those statutes or not. Um, but those who are working the uh, social aspect of religion sh shall be without, uh, without um, hesitation cut off completely. You will not find solace for your iniquity on the weekend in churchianity or any religious outfit. You'll find other people to commune with. You can make each other feel better. You pat each other on the back. You can celebrate um, how, how great you've done in society with your jobs and your, um, your beautiful thing you've built here on earth, which we look at in amazement. And I guess what you call something wonderful, we call uh, an abomination. What you call a beautiful city, we call filled with degradation. What you say is a beautiful government, we look and we see behind the wall, as Ezekiel did, and we see abomination upon abomination, blaspheming God intentionally as a ritual, as a, as a rite of passage given to the children and given to the leaders alike so that they would all be under the hand of Jezebel. Uh, and then when Jezebel rolls out her religion for all to follow, we um, <clears throat> disdain it and we say, unless you come out of this religion, you will go down. You will burn in hell. It's your choice. You can stay in Babylon. Most religions today that are owned by the state um, you know, have charitable uh, deductions. Uh, for taxes, these are uh, basically conforming mechanisms for society anyway. They want to make sure you're successful and that you get a better job and that you take care of your family and you bring the tithe in on time. So these are an abomination unto the Lord. It's your choice if you want to go participate, but recognize that it's getting you no favor with God. You could even go on missions and feed the poor and get no favor from God if it is part of that system. It's just, no, it's no respect to a person. There's no, it's, God is not a meritocracy. The Lord God and the kingdom of God is not something you earn. Otherwise, a lot of people could have earned it perhaps, but not me. And no one I know, maybe there aren't people. I'm, I was thinking of people that tried to be perfect, but I guess none of us is. We cannot please God and we don't have uh, the ability to stand with God because we can't keep the commandments. Jesus raised it to a whole other level. 
if you think about murdering someone, you've done it. If you think about lusting after some your neighbor's wife or whatever, you've done it. If you think about lying, cheating, and stealing the other guy at a business transaction, you've done it. You see, you're just as guilty by contemplating. And who has their mind washed so clean that they don't think occasionally about that they get angry at someone or they curse someone? They don't mean to curse them, but the, they, they speak a word of, well, I hate you or, you know, whatever it is. These all fall short of the glory of God and will not pass through. They need the, the only covering that we have and the only provision we have is the blood that was spilled at Calvary of Jesus Christ that becomes our covering that washes us clean so that we can stand before God, though we still be sinners. The good news, the gospel is called that because though we are all sinners, we, through Jesus, Yeshua, have the capability of standing before God and going off with the Lord. Um, and the good, great news is it's not something you learn by book learning or even by the Bible, but by seeking truth. He appears. Yahweh then becomes Yahweh, Yeshua, the one. So it's back to God saves again. While Jesus is completely misunderstood. On a further more esoteric level, what Jesus is, is really the physical world, isn't he? And we were talking with someone about this yesterday. How Jesus is the word made flesh. He's God in the in a physical form. He is the creator, isn't he? Because he's the one, that, the word is what creates the physical universes. And the word is also a sound, a frequency. And that frequency brings in the worlds into existence. Jesus is that frequency. If you want to know who he is or what aspect of God he is. That's the aspect of God. He is the physical manifestation of God's will, meaning he represents all physical creation. Pretty amazing, huh? He is also, because he does represent and lord over physical creation, he is the only way back to spiritual redemption for sinners because he is in charge of physical creation, and that would include us. It's pretty profound when you think about it deeply. When you realize that God, too, <clears throat> isn't, um, <clears throat> though we talk to him on a personal level, he is uh, at the same time impersonal and that and you know so are our angels impersonal you know the angel can be the force of the wind you know the force of the destruction of the whirlwind of a whirlwind being a tornado and so you see we per <coughs> we personalize god we anthropomorphize god meaning to make him like man, and something we, we can understand. But then we tend to put God in a box because we don't understand the profundity and the incomprehensible um, massiveness and omnipotence of God. So we put him in a box and say, the word says this, so do likewise, because this is what it is. When in actuality, a lot of people would, would hearken to the word, which means submit to Jesus. That That's what hearken to the word actually means. Um, take salvation upon you. You can choose against it if you like. And a choice against would, would make you compatible with the world. But the world will say, no, you have to jump through this hoop in order for us to recognize you. That hoop is renouncing God and salvation and taking the world's salvation, which is basically um, Satanism, uh, based on uh, embracing the lusts of the flesh and the lust of evil to the will to power and the lording it over people and, of course, the hierarchy or matriarchy. Uh, to, you must bow down to the matriarchy that rules the world. That is hidden, that rules the world. Well, Christ is hidden too. And Christ really rules the universes. 
including this world. And they, the enemy, can do nothing unless God allows them to do it, and they know it. Or they would have had their new world order in a long time ago. They would have had their totalitarian global state in a long time ago. It's only really based on people abrogating their responsibility, turning from God, turning from the truth that brings in the totalitarian state. When people's faith goes dry, then the totalitarian state is allowed to come in and take over and make men miserable, which is what the purpose of, say, the Obama administration is and, you know, other Sololinsky radicals. The idea is to create as much misery as possible, keep the economy in a terrible state, and get elected despite it all. Um, with the promise of taking care of some people as opposed to others, the idea really is to lower all people to a state of complete, total human misery and then back it up with guns and with force to make sure that everyone is equally miserable while you put them into the compact city so they can't pollute the countryside to let Mother Nature heal while anyone who thinks about getting free is shot on sight and that's what Obama represents. And I suppose so did Bush and Clinton. They all represent this move to the global totalitarian state, which is, you know, go look at 1984, the movie, if you want to see something or read the book by Orwell. And you'll see um, the state of human misery is their goal and gives them the most joy, which is Satan. It gives them orgasmic glee to make other people miserable. And that's what fosters their abominations and rituals unto God, which include... Um, you know, killing and perversion and whatever else it is they want to do to, to will to power while they're in their pecking orders and fighting it out amongst each other to see who gets to be top dog. This, of course, is folly and should be laughed at by people. Even if we are perishing on our way out, we should laugh heartily at the idiots who belong to, say, TSA, at the idiots that belong to the U.N., at the idiots that belong to the secret societies, at the idiots that belong to masonry and elite guilds that go back to time immemorial, at the idiots who think that man's way can somehow trump Yahweh, can trump the way of God, can, that man's way and man's learning can somehow get one up on God. And finally, the abominable teachings of apotheosis of the masonry that they would think in some amazing manner like comic book writers that somehow there is this great reward of apotheosis, i.e. you becoming your own gods one day to lord it over the universe. I just find that... <laughs> I find that completely and incredibly funny that somehow... A child submitting to the Almighty Yahweh and on his knees in a dark cavern hiding from the Roman legions would be considered a fool where the Roman legions would be considered smart. And when we already know the historical outcome of the two ways, I rest my case. There are no Roman legions today, but there is more Bibles than, <clears throat> than there have ever been. I rest my case. History will bear me out. The way of God is the way of success. The way of God is the way of victory in any kind of thing that you do, whether you're in the throes of a, a battle for your life in, 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 with sickness um, the, the, the very scary world of business where you get screwed at every turn and you're just trying to you know eke it out and which way to go. You need God's guiding hand on you or the sharks will gobble you up. You see, even the world are lambs to the slaughter and they don't even know it. Everyone is a lamb to the slaughter because you're all going to die. All of you are going to die. And all, can even one of you who hears my voice, even one of you, say, I am the captain of my own ship, when your ship is determined by forces outside your control, the wind, 
the water, the ship itself, other ships, other people, other, other plans, disease, limitation, and death. Can anyone say they're the captain of their ship? Should death enter into the equation? The answer is, of course not. And when we look back on our lives, we realize that everything we wanted to do is laughable because it all worked out beautifully. Thank God we didn't get to do what we wanted to do. Amen. I rest my case again. See, parsing the word is really like being in the courtroom. It, it, it really, it, it's just that simple. We make a case for Christ that is implacable and undeniable, but people don't want to follow it because, quote, I don't want to be a monk. I don't want to defy the world like you people clinging to your guns and religion. And I say, what, what defy what world? Defy Satan's world, um, uh, illusionary world system, illusionary satanica to, to, to defy the illusion of, of what you should do in order to get in good with them so you can be ranked, filed, put away in a little box so that you will eventually be a slave. You will do what you're told in the land of the free and the land of milk and honey and you'll just do what you're told. You have got to be kidding me because your God is money so you'll sow to that and then you'll reap what? The whirlwind. You're not going to reap profits. You're not going to have windfall profits. If your God is money, you're going to be poor. The poor, in my definition, are those who are always worrying and striving for money. I don't care if they're millionaires or not. And they always, they don't have it. And they're getting ulcers and they're getting troubles and they're getting pains and suffering. And they're just not happy and not satisfied and not fulfilled because they're always worrying about money. That is a person whose God is money. People who worry about money. That's you, you can spot them on Wall Street. They worry about money. You don't want to do that. Put your trust and hope in the Lord and then make your decisions of what to do with your life and be at peace with it. Knowing that God has guided you the whole way. Thus be in fervent prayer and ask the Lord for every turn of what to do, what to eat, what to, what to wear, how to be, who to see, who not to see, which way to go, where to live, where not to live. Always speaking praise of him for the guidance and thanking him for keeping you from the sharks. The sharks are all around. The, sh the sharks are in the, the form of government bully thugs that are getting more and more powerful. And they're, you know, eventually... They will exercise their power to move you into the compact cities and, and, and force you into uh, cubicles and, you know, as if you've done something wrong and tell you your rights come from the state, period, and you'll do what you're told or you'll be killed. And we're trying to prevent that. And the only way that can be prevented, because that's the way of the world, if you want to know what sowing to the world system is like, look at Russia. That would be an example. Or China. Or Cuba or Venezuela. And then you'll see what sowing to the world system is eventuates in, which is, you know, you can call it Marxism, communism, but really that's just another word for Satanism or collectivism. And uh, it's amazing to me how many people in America are collectivists. It's, it's hard to understand. Why, if you're born in the land of, the, of opportunity, would you become a collectivist? And the answer is because you're worried about money. Therefore, you reject God, sell your soul, get on the, 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 the gravy train, and try to ride it as long as you can. But when you get older, they reject you because there's too many kids that want to get on there uh, coming out of college and, and different things. And uh, it's time for you to be bumped off well before you've had your time for, to build your retirement account. Well, that doesn't seem like a very good thing to me. Why put your faith in that? Why not put your faith in God? Because you'll be rejected by this, the system of iniquity, Babylon, we call it. And if you're rejected by Babylon, then you're, you're blackballed and you can't ever get back in again. And you'll just be a fool begging for food. And it's like, well, I've never seen Yahweh's people beg for food. We're the chosen people. And we've never begged for food. 
And our children don't beg for food and our grandchildren don't beg for food. The wicked will be the ones begging for food. Those who are in positions of power now will be flipped over into positions of no power. But look around. You can see people that had it going on, say, 10 years ago, and they were working and making money and going on vacation and in harmony within their families. And now that the economy has gotten tough, they're bickering and fighting with each other and, and uh, drinking and, and doing drugs and, and falling into horrible patterns of, of hatred of one another. And these marriages are breaking up because they were based on uh, when times were good. They were based on um, uh, a situation God ordained and they rejected God but that God ordained a time of peace and prosperity and they, and they wrote it out as if they were entitled to it when they didn't spend one day revering their Lord God who made them and made it possible for them to prosper. Thus, they gave their thanks to their loins. They gave their thanks to their urges of, of envy and strife. They gave their thanks to the devil who they say delivered them. Holy shit. <laughs> that just sounds terrible. It just sounds so awful, but I know it's true, and I'm sorry it's true, but it just sounds so completely, utterly, devastatingly terrible that one would give thanks to one's loins in a time of prosperity that God ordained. Now God's pulled the time of prosperity away. That doesn't mean his people won't prosper. They are. Thank you very much. It means the world will no longer prosper. It means Babylon will not prosper. And they'll say the only way for Babylon to prosper is to uh, destroy the economy so that we can put everyone in under surveillance and we'll be able to monitor them and tell them where they can work to make widgets for us in an ongoing exercise of, uh, of power. And they will demand your worship as the satanic system that was hidden in the matriarchy and in the spirit now goes overt and mainstream as it takes over, the, as, it, as it chews up the countryside. And at the same time, all the, th the hidden things like gang stalking, uh, you know, electronic tracking and surveillance. Uh, well, we've all, you know, a lot of us have been through all that. This will become just the normal mode of the day. These electronic weapons will be just out on display on the streets for crowd control and already are. Sonic weapons, microwave weapons, uh, microwave weapons used to cook and control the, and subdue the population. Voice to skull, uh, satellite weapons, you name it. They'll all be there to control the uneasy crowd. And, and already I believe they're being experimented on in places like Syria and Egypt to see, you know, to dial in the certain level of control from space. The grid goes beyond that to where they want in your DNA and under your skin, where they will implant you with things that will change your DNA. That's called the mark of the beast. Once your DNA has changed, you are no longer acceptable to God. And you are, you're, if you were in the Lamb's Book of Life, you will not be because you are no longer a human being. They will make sure that happens not just on the spiritual level, which happens to most people. They become zombies. They become vampires. They become inhuman. If you like, they become dead or twice dead while still walking around on this earth. God's already written those people off, those who work iniquity, who have become the twice dead. Um, there's nothing I can say I, where we are forbidden to minister to them. So, I mean, we can do it on this show, I suppose. Maybe there's, if there's a way back for someone, I, I don't know. Once a person becomes twice dead and believes in his heart that the world system is the only way to go and who sows to it their whole lives, thus becoming the demonic uh, familiar entity that guided them in the first place, who then takes over and uh, makes sure that you know, their children are also infected with the same disease. At that point, um, they're just, they're, there's only one thing to do with them. And um, 
God will do this collectively and uh, in the sight of men because the Lord will always win. The Lord will always win and the people who sow to death, who become death while living and who celebrate their funerals saying, oh, this is so great. We became death, but look, we get all the trinkets. These people are the first up for uh, destruction and the Lord God will take them off the planet because he'll use them now to test his own. And then they will no longer be necessary as props or as, uh, I mean, some of them actually change in the DNA where you could, uh, someone, someone said they used a laser and a laser pointer will go right through them. <laughs> you know, like there's nothing there. And I, I don't know about that, but I found that to be kind of a funny story. Um, no, there's, there's really nobody home and there's really nothing there. And the only way that there could be something there is if they repent. That's the only way you can find out if there is a way to rede redemption, if they are twice dead. And, and if that's the case, then they would not, their hearts would not have turned to stone. There would still be some hope in their hearts that, that God will still have a piece of himself in that person. It's not completely dead. They're just, you know, they're just uh, basically kind of walking dead, but they're not, there's still some ray of hope in them. I'm not one to judge those people. The only thing I can say is when, you know, I'm, there's a lot of people that I'm told not to minister to, uh, you know, a general kind of sort that celebrates the world system. And you see a lot of them in the music business. I mean, it's kind of wall to wall. And I look at that, I'm, I'm just horrified that how stupid these musicians are. I think you're just a stupid, you're just a dumb musician to begin with. You need all the help you can get. You know, I mean, why would you do this if you're not going to, well, you're, you know, you're not going to get on the A-list show anyway. So if you sell out for, 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 so you can play blues in a club, um, what, what, what have you done? You know, it's almost like your death would almost be, um, you know, should Yahweh provide it, uh, a mercy killing. You know, and, and do you expect that you'll be protected by the devil and provided for? And how many have fallen into ghettos and hard times and drugs? Too many. Yet they still beat the same drum. I, I just don't, I just don't understand. I, and, and someone, I, you know what? I have the, I have a lousy bedside manner. You know, I get to a point where I just don't comprehend. I really don't. I mean, I know you want to be cool and accepted by your buddies at the club. At the one place you're allowed to play your music, you know, every other Thursday. I, I, How? I mean, I used to gig every night, you know, I'd play every night and I just, you know, um, and it was, uh, here and there and traveling and whatnot. And, um, to me, it never seemed that great. I never really wanted any social acceptance. I did, you know, I kind of, you know, I was there because I enjoyed playing. I did, you know, I liked to gig back in the day and did. And I found that to be, um, fun for a time, but you know, it didn't do it for me completely. I can't imagine selling a soul so that I could, I mean, if they kicked me out of gigging, it didn't matter to me. It was all right. Uh, there was nothing, as I told someone yesterday, it was telling me they, they were trying to preserve things and, um, you know, um, anyway, I told them, I just said, I'm, you know, and they, they wondered how I was feeling about it, you know, a few material items. And I said, uh, hey, excuse me, I am not attached to anything in this world. Anything. I feel a great sense of detachment from the things of the world. And um, I don't strive for anything. I I just don't, you know, and there are things I, I, I'm doing that, you know, for example, um, a, pro a music project. But I'm not you know, worried about it. And I, I, it's, it's, I'm detached from it, though I'm doing it. And that, I guess I've learned. Trish, yeah. would you do me the great favor yeah. of another cafe, s'il vous plaît? Oui. 
Happy anniversary, baby. This is our anniversary, and uh, we've been together 20 years. Um, 20 years we have uh, lived together, nonstop, for 20 years. And we are having um, a kind of a new, a, a new whirlwind romance right now. I have been so blessed that it's, it, I just, I almost envy myself. <laughs> um, but the only way that you could hang on to someone like Trish is you just really can't have a closed hand. You know, you really, uh, she's like a free spirit and, you know, and, uh, and very independent. And you really can't, you know, be a controlling, you know, worrying person and expect to have a relationship with her. I mean, I, I've, you know, it's been a great test in, in the idea of detachment because I don't own Trish. You know, um I can see her doing things and 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 um, and all that, but I, but it's it's like uh, the only way it was going to work uh, would be to you know find out <clears throat> what she wants to do with her life and be supportive of that. In other words, you know, to to try to help um, you know her realize any goals or dreams she may have, rather than um, just looking at her as someone to help me. And um, the the other thing is detachment, and you know that that's something I've had to really practice, and and something that comes easily now. But detachment, meaning you know, I don't own her. See, we have between us, we have Jesus, the Lord. We have Yeshua, Hamashiach, Yahweh. We have that God as our you know. So so for her, that would be her husband. For me, that would be my life. You know, my wife, my my fulfillment, my mother, my father, my group, the holy angels of God, my peers, the uh, the, the 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 brethren who has gone on to shine like the stars uh, forever and ever, my family. The people on earth like me who, you know, may not know completely why they're here, but um, they're here and they know what they are and who they are. My uh, brethren. When you take the whole thing together, it's just a massive life. It's a massive purpose. And all of us are just like different, you know, aspects of God's will. And we go out and do what we do. So I'm lending my talent now to this, but I'm, I have no interest in someone critiquing it. You can like it, you can hate it, it doesn't matter. I'm exercising a gift that God gave me without repentance, which is the ability to speak and communicate certain ideas and, and, and the word of God exactly as it's meant to be communicated, specifically on the razor's edge, where it cuts to the bone like a knife where you are all slain in the spirit like there's no wiggle room for you to get out of it, where you know that I have put forth a case that is implacable and undeniable and no way to argue it. Um, a lot of people just disagree with my idea or my interpretation of the word, which is really just a direct revelation of the word, of this idea of, Burning in hell. Uh, Trish? Yes, sir? Any idea where that coffee is? Oh, yeah. Maybe I should be a little more attached to my... <laughs> I made it. Jack's... Little Jack's transplant went well. Good. Kidney transplant. Little Jack in Australia, four years old. Lizzie's... Uh, yes. Lizzie and Daryl's... Uh, Young son, we Jack. prayed, and, so, and we continue to pray. Hallelujah! hallelujah that's oh, wonderful. Good. Oh, good. Oh, good. 
Okay. Anyway, the point is, is that there's no wiggle room out of the word because God is no respecter of what persons. If there was wiggle room with God, and the wiggle room doesn't have to do with being perfect. I mean, I am way less perfect than a lot of the Satanists. A lot of the Satanists sin a lot less than I do. It's just that they're over the line. I'm not over the line. I'm with God. I'm on his line. If I were over the line, it doesn't matter how perfect I would act. I'm going to burn. God is no respecter of persons. I repeat, God is no respecter of you and me in our need for wiggle room or ideas of putting God in a box or ideas about theology or reality or any other idea we may have. God doesn't, it's, it's, it's irrelevant what you think about religion. I'm here to simply revelate that there is this line and anything on the other side of the line is found this way and anything on this other side of the line is found that way. And there is no way that we can um, use our opinions of, oh, I wish it were this way. I wish it was that way. Oh, these are such precious souls. Oh, how could you do that, Yahweh? Because that's how people end up rejecting God is they, they moralize and, 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 and they subjectivize their uh, opinions about what they see <clears throat> other people and the merits or demerits of those people or the, the, and they say that they should all be in heaven with the Lord. They should all be on the next plane of reality. They should all be in eternal life. And, you know, um, the only one that determines eternal life is whether or not you're written in the Lamb's book of life. And, and if you're not, then you're not. And the only way you can figure that out is you can work it backwards and say, well, do, do, am I a slave to the world system? Did I pass through to the other side? Was I initiated into it? Am I a part of it? Am I a part of the world? Now, I'm not talking about whether you play the game. You can play the game and be on, you know, the, a game like trying to be one of them, I suppose. This was the big problem I had. This is why witches tried to, you know, do me in with their Santeria and whatnot. They try to do me in because I speak truth, period. Because souls get free if they listen up to what's being said here, because the word of God, no matter who speaks it, and it's nothing special to me, but no matter who is given utterance to it, will be set free. And they, the witches of the world, want a world of bondage where they lord over it and lord over everybody. And anyone that's not willing to bow down to them, uh, they want dead. And that's, so if you want to know what the spirit is behind communism, that's it. Behind totalitarianism, that's it. To me, it's very simple. The world is extremely simple because simpletons are the ones who arrange the world. They're retards are the ones who arrange the world system. It's very easy. Once you get up to the 33 degree level of masonry, you become the biggest idiot on the planet. You're very predictable at that point. You want your apotheosis. You want your power. You want your success. You want to lord it over everyone with a totalitarian state where you're exalted as God. I know. Gee, don't I know. Isn't that something? Doesn't it take a rocket science to figure out your motives, Mr. 33 degree? Mr. Manley P. Hall and company? You people are boring to me because you don't know. You don't know the slightest thing about God. The, the least thing in all your books, in all the things you've written, in all the esoteric knowledge, you don't know the slightest thing about your creator. Isn't that amazing? A child four years old knows more than you do. Yet you're the wise men of the earth. Hallelujah. That's just something that makes me laugh all the way to the, all the, way to the, to the desert and then go on. And it just gives me such pleasure to think about something like that. It just makes me want to kick my heels up and do a jig. Why, I am just uh, thrilled to know that God is so good that he could make me who is unenlightened, uninitiated, unvetted, um, some sort of uh, heathen, some kind of dumbass to the world system that I could be brought into knowledge like that 
to where I would be able to call a 33 degree Mason an idiot. And I, I don't mean it like, you know, Jesus forbids us saying Raka, which really means airhead. Um, so I will say, I'll, I will repent on that and I'll take that back and I'll just call them uh, politely. And, and Lord, forgive me, let me do it another way. I will call them <clears throat> wise in their own understanding which ultimately, when you get to that level of enlightenment of the 33 degree or enlightenment in, in, I suppose, in Buddhism or anything else, means you're the stupidest person on the block because it's an endless repetition of a certain singular sentence, that sentence being how you are um, exalted to be co-equal with God. And that's, you know, um, uh, and I suppose in Buddhism it would be you are really the creator and the master of your universe and of everything you see. And if anything is un, uh, untoward, if something you don't like, it's your karma to work out to make it right. Am I close? Negating God or affirming him doesn't matter in that case. Each person becomes their own God and responsible for their own outcome. So, Mr. 33 Degree, what do you think of the world that you've created here? You happy with it? It's those people clinging their guns and religion. Well, people need guns against people like you because, you know, we all know what you would do. You know, my grandfather was a 33 Degree Mason. Yep, and he was uh, an expert in the rough and tumble world of uh, big business. And he played it a certain way for, for success and power. And um, my God, that man suffered the last 40 years of his life. And I don't think I'd want to see anyone suffer like he suffered ever again. He was so racked with guilt, he couldn't, he couldn't possibly move. He tried to help me at that point because he felt uh, guilty about all the things he had done to achieve success. And I mean, he felt really guilty. It ruined his life. It completely ruined his life. He had everyone scared of him. If they wouldn't even mention his name in an, in an uh, untoward light because um, uh, they were wondering whether they would live another week. I mean, it was like on that level. Oh, no, I've seen it. I mean, you know, when you tell me that uh, Barack Obama had gay lovers that wind up dead, um, I grew up in a world where people wound up dead all the time for a lot less than that. You see what I mean? Yeah. So I understand the way all that works. And all I'm saying is that's the devil, man. That's, that's the realm of the devil. In other words, my grandpa lost the game, didn't he? He was a good guy. You know, he, he really was. It just, you know, he was caught up in something way bigger than himself. And ultimately, he didn't control it. It controlled him in the end. But he was as successful at, at power-wise <clears throat> He wasn't the richest cat out there, but he was, he was powerful. You know, he was the most powerful for a while in Los Angeles. And, um, and, and that came with a price. Just like you have your union bosses today. A union boss today is as powerful as that, where, you know, they don't like something, they can go fix it with their thuggery. And they, you know, if someone's in the way, they get taken out. You know, that's the, that's the way it gets to be when you get up in the upper echelons of power. People get, people obey and follow the rules because they don't want to be the one taken out. They, they don't want to throw their lives away, so they, so they obey. Meanwhile, uh, obedience is getting us into a totalitarian world system of a complete total collapse of the old and, and a bringing in of the new, which is a jackboot thug on your face forever, which is a quote from George Orwell's 1984, and that's where we're headed because that's... That's basic humanity 101. Hum human beings are in a fallen state, incapable of taking care of themselves, incapable of governing themselves, incapable of educating themselves. Without God, they can't do it. And so the utter failure will be shared among billions of people. All equally miserable, so it's fair. and enforced with a jackboot and a gun to your head. You push that lever when we tell you to push it and, uh, and not otherwise. I, I remember the series Lost. 
I really love that uh, where they had that guy had to push the buttons or else like some, you know, the, the reality that they're that they're living in will be uh, 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 obliterated. Remember, so every every day at a certain hour, he had to push the buttons. Remember that, Trish? I thought that was the most profound uh, piece in the entire uh, series. Whoever came up with that is is got some uh, got a genius streak right there. Uh, um, because that's it. You're pushing these mindless buttons um, be, and doing what you're told, so your reality won't slip. It's a perfect metaphor for. Uh, what everybody does every day. They push those same buttons they push and lost to make sure their reality doesn't slip. Oh, oh well, folks, your reality is slipping. You're pushing the buttons and it's, and it's being obliterated right before your eyes anyway. You just keep pushing those buttons, but the buttons, as they were in lost, ended up being meaningless. The buttons were meaningless. The routine, the, the slavery that you've signed on to is meaning, your job is meaningless. The overall economy and government is meaningless. The institutions of higher learning, ha, there, there's an oxymoron if I've ever heard one, are meaningless. The ball game, the concert, the music industry, the entertainment industry, the, the, the sports industry, all one and the same, is meaningless. What's in, what's out, what's hot, what's not. The, 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 the uh, global designers and artists and whatnot, meaningless. And those who sow to all that become suicidal because, unless they're already dead, but they become suicidal because they realize the meaninglessness of their meaningless activity of creating a certain kind of button or a widget or, or a, a, a game, or, or a music, or this or that, or something to look at to distract us. I have a, an iPad to distract me. And um, I use it for like Skype phone calls and uh, you know mail and uh, whatever, communication. And uh, now I understand that I will be able to use it uh, in the studio, I'm going to probably end up upgrading my um, mixer, which is meaningless, but I'm going to do it, uh, to a digital um, uh, mixer as soon as I get the right card for the, uh, for the Firewire. Um, and I understand they have an application where I can be on the iPad and it will... Uh, the controls will appear on the iPad, so I move the control on the iPad, and it will, um, I guess through Wi-Fi or whatever, it will uh, it will move the faders. So I will have on the iPad my faders away from the physical mixer, and you can push them on the screen. So like I say, I'm playing drums in the studio. Well, I can sit over there and play drums, and have my and and mix them in in the recording. Uh, from there, I can actually trigger the recording with the iPad. So that sounds like it'll be a help. And sure, I'm grateful that exists. But ultimately, you know, that or the mixer I have now, which is fine, a Yamaha mixer, it's great. It's still meaningless. The synthesizers I have are meaningless. They make amazing sounds, the two of them. They make, I actually have three. I've got a Microcorg and a, and a Gaia and a Venom. And... uh those three synths are between those. There's not a sound that you, you, and all the sounds are very cutting edge. They're very, you know, the microcorg was sort of legendary for, for being ahead of the curve and still is being kind of like a poor man's Moog, you know, but, um, anyway, uh, killer bass on the, uh, the Korg. So basically between those, I, you know, there's nothing I can't do, but I, I don't get that excited because they're, they're just a means to an end. They're, they're not even physically in, here in space. I'm just passing through, you see. They don't take on a preciousness. I can't just worship them. You know how 
I see a lot of these musicians worshiping their vintage boxes. And this is the all time funniest thing in the world. How I see these people worshiping a box that's put in a rack that they drag around from gig to gig and they're like worshiping it. You know, do you realize what this, uh, this AD converter can do or this, uh, do you realize what this thing will do to my tone? This particular compressor is like a, a vintage compressor from 1968, this certain studio and I have it in my rig. And this makes me sound like Eric Clapton circa 1968 cream concert uh, in the UK. And I was there. I, I was like, what, what, are you, what in the world are you babbling on about? Nobody cares because it's, um, you care, but you care because it helps to get you through to make that little box your God. It helps you, your compressor is now your God. It helps you get through another day. I know, I understand that, but still you're going to have to get, you're going to have to, you're going to, <laughs> you're going to have to have this conversation. You're going to have to, when you get to the point of detachment, like for example, if you were to suddenly get ill, I don't know why I'm talking to it. Are Is there a gigging musician out there that's, uh, Right now, you're probably so pissed off with me, you just want to take my head off, don't you? For popping your little bubble. But that bubble was killing you. It was a poison bubble. You're breathing poison gas. You're not going anywhere. You know, worshiping your boxes and your um, your your Chuck Taylors and your T-shirt and your um, you're you're fading. You're 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 going to wither as the as the grass withers when it goes to winter. You don't you understand none of it. You can, none of it is, it's all meaningless. It's completely irrelevant to what's going on. What's going on is, you know, yes, there are physical objects that, you know, like a mixer, but to get overly excited about something like that is a waste of time and it will lead to a fall because things can't save you and you must be saved. I know the guy in the who recklessly proclaimed, uh, I don't need no salvation or whatever. I know that Jim Morrison said, cancel my subscription to the resurrection. But these people were young and foolish. They didn't understand what they were doing. They, were ha they had to do that in order to keep their power base. You know, They got rewards for, to, every time they would do something satanic, like renounce God and say they don't need salvation and they don't need a resurrection and they don't need this and that. And... Um, that they would embrace and worship death or embrace the world system or take the world in a love embrace, as it says in uh, John Kay, uh, uh, Born to be Wild music, uh, Steppenwolf. And then, you know, the idea of, or come on and take a free ride, Edgar Winter. And they all are kind of like, you know, we'll take you to the promised land. It's like, no, you won't. You only take people to hell. Pain, death, and suffering. I'm here to tell you that the way of the Lord is the way of peace, the way of joy, the way of true love, the way of truth, the way of being nurtured as a child. We're all still children. I don't care whether you're 80 years old, you're still a child. You're still a child. We are children from the day we're born to the day we leave. We're children. And, and, None of us has enough time to develop into a full rational adult here. 80 years is not enough time. You can say wiser things than you said when you were, say, 50, but it doesn't make you an adult. An adult or an emancipated being is someone who's been through this process, and which is a birth process, and then has been born and then lives. And been born again, you know, out of being cursed to blessed. And then a person, uh, you know, realizes that uh, they're on their way to adulthood, which is really t permanent childhood. But that child being an emancipated being under the Lord is going to always be the Lord's child. But that being exists without want or striving, without need to push forward into the next moment or lament and loathe the last one. whose fallen consciousness is finally set right again to, to timeless, which is now. Detachment comes to me in the form uh, what the Zen Buddhists strive for, I've achieved, but not through achievement. 
not through not wanting, not through intention, in a way through persecution, being denied, being slapped down, being to the point where it just became like, yeah, well, why would I strive for that anyway? And yet at the same time, things will get done. This podcast will get done. It will get produced. It will be uh, uploaded to the internet. Despite every effort or every non-effort, despite my not striving to do something for you, despite my not negating doing something for you because the negation would be equal to the striving, would it not? In other words, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. Yes, I'm going to do that. Yes, no. Yes, no. Well, somewhere between the two is the is called peace. And, uh, you know, that wisdom is known... Uh, uh, very strongly in the East, like in Taoism, the Tao is that is the way we call the way of nature. It's called the way, but it's really the way of watching how nature works and flowing with it. It's like someone told me the other day, they said, you know, the person that tries to avoid stepping in the puddles is stepping in them all day long. Therefore, I know you don't want to step in a puddle, but don't don't worry about it. And the Lord is saying, okay, avoid all that by not coveting and worrying and pushing. It's the same teaching, just a different way, different method. Whether it be Taoism or Christ, it's both equal. It's the, the same wisdom is coming from all over the world. Oh, I know that sounds blasphemy, but you have to understand Christ is the Tao. Christ is Buddhism. Yeah, you don't understand what I mean. It's okay. You don't understand what I mean. I mean that before anything, there is Christ. Before there is creation, there is Christ. Before there is a, a Buddha or, or even a Jesus, there is Christ. <laughs> you see? So he's everywhere. So therefore, I don't have to erect all these walls to, to, to keep out all these bad things. Um, because in, in so doing, I'm creating those bad things. If I really want the devil to amplify, then I'll make a war against the devil and try to keep him out. And in so doing, I will bring him in completely and I will be taken over and overrun and beleaguered and, you know, he'll have me on the ropes. It's just, you know, <laughs> that's the way life works. I don't know why it's that way, but I'm imparting this, this to you so you understand. The Lord will protect you, so give it to him and don't worry so much. I, no, 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 it's not the same teaching as don't worry about the enemy and what they're up to. Um, I'm not saying accept sin and abomination as part of your lifestyle at all meaning ideas that come into your like you see it you know it comes in and um you have say lady gaga blaspheming god by taking herself out of an egg and embracing the fallen angels triple helix dna um which is intentional and which is you know this is, if you want more on that it's jonathan clack he's he's on that subject uh quite a lot and anyway um, you see something blasphemy like blasphemous like that, and even she may not even understand it. Uh, you don't just go, okay. You you make a note, you know. Um, I see, but remain detached. Yes, they would like to bring in a triple helix DNA, and take over the play. I understand, okay, but I trust my Lord. Next, please. If I really want to be under attack what I could do is I could really focus on it. And then the UFOs would start chasing me. And I've had them chase me before. Not the most pleasant thing in the world. Um, <laughs> uh, I made a note that I used to see things 
um, in the grain of wood when I was under demonic uh, attack. Uh, the, the, the wood would take on like all kinds of perverted scenes and, 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 and violence and, you know, just, just gross stuff, you know, almost like in the devil's advocate, how that wall in that movie with Al Pacino, the wall would be these abominations coming out of the wall. It was like that. It could be the clouds, the grain of, uh, you know, wood ceilings like we have here, uh, where you have, you know, knots in the wood and different things. And it would just be full blown people coming out of there, walking around, doing things uh, alive, you know? And, uh, um, and it's went on for years and then it finally stopped when, uh, a generational curse on me had stopped. And so I realized, oh, that wasn't normal. I mean, I accepted it as normal because, I mean, it was there every day, whether I liked it or not. Hey, um, Eli, Eli, leave Molly alone. Trish, Molly's being harassed by Eli. All right. Okay, they're still carrying on. Anyway, um... So I'm, I, you know, I, I, then, I, then it's gone, and then I see it appear yesterday when I, when I'm dealing with uh, yet another uh, situation where there were things thrown, and now it's cleared. But it's, it's weird how that was a permanent oppression, and it's very oppressing to see things like that and to realize, you know, there's a big weight on you. Your life is just, you know, and then, and then that I believe that oppression over the years that, that kind of like, in a way, slowed me down on things was really a gift because it taught me about detachment. So I would look at this stuff in a detached way. In other words, I'm not going to try to make contact with it because it's everywhere. Everywhere I would go, these demons would be manifesting in the artworks, the air, the clouds, other people, you know, it, it, you just couldn't escape it. And, uh, and then I realized, ah, that's what the witches had put on me. And now God took off. But whether they put it on me or God took it off, you see, I get to the point of it's still irrelevant. I mean, I had to be patient to get through it. But I had to not fight it because it was useless to fight it because I'm just a man. You know, I prayed about it daily, all day long, every, sometimes I'd pray all day long and pray, 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 but it wasn't coming off. So I, I said, okay, Lord, I guess this is something that I'm going to have to bear, you know, like Job, I'm just going to have to bear this. And it's okay, Lord, because I love you more than my own comfort zone here. You are the one father. I trust you will get me through it. And that's where I found peace. And that's where there is peace. But there is not peace in me. You know, what do you want me to do? Take the wood and um, destroy it. You see how absurd that would be? Take the uh, people who are coming against me, suddenly manifesting as different kinds of personalities through the all-seeing eye connection of the hive mind. And as they come at me, attack them personally. No. No. I must speak to what's in them. I will speak to the demon in them who's controlling it, and I will say, what's up, baby? <clears throat> Here we go again, huh? You think you're so smart. But I will not take it out personally on that human being that's being used as a fit extension for Satan's uh, you know, realm of demonic uh, sycophants. You know, uh, I'm not interested in having a personal grudge of someone who is weak and is used by the enemy. I'm not interested in bitch slapping them because they're not the problem. The problem is what's in them. And anybody could be weak and used by that, that side at any time. I've had people talk in completely different voices and different la languages, even all kinds of things. So different voices, different languages, um, <clears throat> other manifestations, physical manifestations, uh, dra flying dragons, 
Um, what else have we seen? Aliens, alien ships, other people acting as aliens, shape-shifting, morphing, gang stalking, uh, electronic surveillance, cooked with microwaves. I mean, on and 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 on. And the only thing I can tell you is that the human being left to his own devices will hurt, kill, maim, destroy other people and then himself. Unless some divine intervention is possible because the demonic realm wants total destruction for all humanity. Period. End of story. And that's why they exist. Am I making myself painfully clear? Without a walk in Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, who is the Word made flesh, which is before all human beings were in existence. Um, without Yahweh salvation, without a guiding hand of the Lord and his holy mighty angels, humanity and individuals don't stand a chance against this machine. No chance whatsoever. And I'm going to get off here. It's now one hour and 11 minutes. And may you be blessed. Shalom, shalom. And may you be fed and led. You can do this right now. Go there. And I'll see you next time. Zeph Daniel, the Zeph Report, out.